how you guys doing? We were talking track groups today, and I'm going to make the argument on why uh, recent history and categorizing pretty much all the 1.5 miles together have has been way more successful for me than looking at specific uh, details of like the 1.5s. Like there's arguments of like, well, this is a fast flat track. This is a fast high bank track. I don't necessarily look at it in that sense. When we're splitting hairs, sure, but I want to I just talk about the 1.5s and why I just look at them all together, and we'll have data to, to support this and, and all that. I also want to talk about, you know, the short tracks and everything of that nature, but just really my approach when it comes to categorizing tracks and what data points I'm looking for when I'm, you know, just working week by week, you know, race by race basis, when I'm looking back at stuff, when I'm trying to find specifically what happened with certain cars, why these guys underperformed why they overperformed, whatever happened in that sense there. For those that don't know, I used to work on race cars for several years. Uh, this is way before COVID and stuff. But uh, look, at, look, at, look at little me. Look at, look at little me. Look at all fancy and everything. This is my favorite picture that has ever been taken of me. It looks like I'm like writing down my cheat and setup notes. Like, oh, man, I got to get away with this. It's a tech line. Uh, but I'm actually just I'm actually just cleaning the, the car. Uh, this is a this is a shop towel just covered in WD-40. It is not a notebook, but it looks like looks like I'm making little cheating notes. I'm like, all right, man, this is gonna get I'm gonna get past tech this way. Um, anyway, I just wanted to just show this to, to people because I don't know. It, it, some people might be like, you don't know jack about tracks. Like, what are you talking about? At least for me, whenever I answer these questions or whenever I'm analyzing this stuff, I look at it from when I was working on race cars, when I was building, when I was setting up the cars and stuff like that. And so on our left side, we have the entire schedule for at least the cup series stuff. And all this stuff still stands for Xfinity and truck, but I'm using cup as the main example here. So this is all the tracks that we're visiting in the 2024 campaign. These are all of the 1.5s outside of Homestead. I have not, I haven't, I haven't pulled Homestead yet. Okay. Forgive me, please. But um, for the most part, this is every, this is all the data points that I used entering. And the reason why is Homestead is the last 1.5 we'll go to each year. It's the one right before things start getting stupid. Like, you know, like even this year, we had Hamlin and Larson both wreck out. Uh, that is, we'll talk about that as we get along when we talk specifically about Homestead later in the year. But this is my high fancy. Uh, uh, rating uh, that I have here. So this is a combination of at least how I weight stuff. Uh, so this is uh, a percentage of laps in the top five, top 10 laps led, fast laps ran, average running position, and pit crew data points all put up here. I typically don't enjoy when I have data points that have like one, two, three, four, like the, like the actual integers, you know, ranking everybody. I'm just not a fan of that. I am quite autistic in some senses. So like for me, this is much easier for me to read because I know right here, this is 10th place. This is 10th place. This is top 10. This is, this is the rest of the field. So at least for me, whenever I'm going, cause I've had questions of why don't I have numbers ranked by everybody? I just, I want to see the names and it'll show up when I start like control F and, and looking through stuff. So when we're looking at the tracks and we'll talk about these uh, when we get through, but just very quickly, when we're looking at the tracks on the actual schedule, you know, I forgot. Let's see really fast. We go to 35 tracks, correct? I think so. Um, <laughs> for the most part. So like clearly we have Daytona. We're going to just categorize all of the Daytona and Talladega in an, together. I was going to say in and of themselves, but we categorize those guys together. We're actually just going to black those guys out. Why is that? Well, because Daytona and Talladega, you know, 60 to 65% of the field gets taken out on in these races they're pack racing they have no data point that is even usable at any other track okay we have the atlanta stands who are wanting to pull stuff from these that i would disagree that's at least where i'm at um so daytona talladega daytona talladega these four races are just removed from the data set entirely we don't need data points for this okay uh you know we're looking at starting positions finishing positions what starting positions in those exact races end up yielding cars that usually end up either performing well or finding to be optimal or just scoring you enough points to cash in these in these contests and stuff so for the most part we are not discussing those the two atlanta races same thing we i've already kind of started the atlanta discussion uh, we're going to remove that as well. Now, Atlanta, I would argue that you can look at that specific race when we're looking at, like, track history and entering. Like, look, I don't use track history, but Atlanta, 
is a place where I would use track history more so starting, same thing, starting position history. Maybe once we start getting more and more races in, because now we've only had this reconfigured Atlanta for two seasons. Uh, like, I mean, if we use that, it's like William Byron's the greatest of all time with this track. That, that That's not a data point that we really want to look at. So we're not talking about Atlanta. We're not talking about Daytona. These are the three categories we're looking at. We are looking at the short tracks, we are looking at the intermediates, and we are looking at the road courses. Let's get the road courses out of the way first. So typically, we are seeing that starting position is very, very important at the road courses. And so when we're looking at, like, we can even go to good old racingreference.com, and we can look at, like, this is a situation where I'm like, yeah, dude, race and reference rules, because we can just look at, road courses you can just do the last 10 races and very easily get your rankings there and it's usually pretty reliable okay when we're looking here i i typically just set it by top five just so i can see where everybody's finishing but typically because we're looking at the last 10 road courses this is pretty recent data we go to so many road courses now we're not really getting into uh races like really really years ago at this point it's pretty much all of the 2023 races that we've been to in the last uh couple races from 2022 this is a perfect data point that I'm perfectly fine with. Uh, now, some people might argue, you know, we want the faster road courses. We want to separate those uh, between the two rovals. So, like, you, if you're looking at the roval data, then you're going to be wanting to look at the Daytona uh, road course data when they are running there, yada, yada, yada. You're going to want to look at, um, uh, I just went blank, Road America, uh, so on and so forth. You're going to want to rate the Indianapolis GP with the Chicago say For me... I just look at road courses in general, and really, if I'm looking at data sets and looking at data points for road courses, I'm looking specifically at where these guys are qualifying. So, like, for example, when we look at A.J. Allmendinger, a guy who typically shows what the car has in practice and qualifying in the race, it's very rare that we see A.J. Allmendinger perform bad in tracks that... Um, or perform bad in crashes, or perform bad in races that he has a good car in. Like, for example, you know, like, this is, a, at least for me, this is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a data point in my direction to, to back this up. So, like, for example, like, we know Ed Jelmeninger is a good road course racer. We know he's going to get everything out of the car. If he qualifies well and practices well, that means most likely he's going to run well. We can see that qualified six finishes first i'm not concerned necessarily with the finishing position i'm i would more so look at average rating but just for this example this is easy to see start six finishes first start six finishes fourth qualifies bad has a bad practice day finishes bad that's just how it is now we can go in the race i'm like hmm why did he go a lap down we i mean we can look and, and dig into this more but for at least when i'm looking over things i typically trust uh, just recent road courses and stuff so like yet again aj you know starts 10th finishes 17th last year's chicago street course like you need to remember that yeah sure that was the one race where a lot of place differential came through but you got to remember half the field got fucked over because nascar was like ah you know what guys uh i know you guys just pitted for fuel because you thought we were going the full length but uh jokes on you we're not we're ending in 10 laps so all the people who didn't pit uh who stayed out <laughs> like got an advantage NASCAR fucked half the field and they had the big one and stuff like that. Uh, you know, he ends up brand new an issue at Sonoma, but typically, um, if you are able to see people who are running well in practice, running well in qualifying, they typically don't lose a ton of positions. I know we're looking at a second to 16th here, but like, yeah, sure. 14 positions is pretty huge, but in terms of you falling through the entire field, it's going to be very difficult for you to do that. And so when we're looking at road courses, you know, when we look at Coda, when we look at, we got to go through them all. We got to look at Sonoma. We got to look at, if we can get there. Got to look at Watkins Glen. We got to look at the Roval. Is this all we have this year? Right, am I missing one? I don't believe I am. Lord knows if I am, I'm going to be disappointed. There we go. There, that's Chicago. That was the one I was looking for. Because we're running the 400 at uh, Indy this year. And you guys should be able to see this, right? Yeah, you guys are. So we're going to just rank all the uh, all the, all the the road courses in orange. So, like, just this year, you know, if we're looking at last year, that's an addition of one more. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So, like, yet again, when you go to, like, race and reference, if you just want to, like, eyeball it really fast just to see, you would go to, I just went blank on that, one, two, three, four, five. We're looking at six. So we're going to look at the last six road courses. We're going to look at road courses we're going to get the rankings in the cup series and typically this is going to give you a good idea of how everybody was last year okay now yet again i would implore you or at least i i will because I, I have nothing better to do in my life i'll go through as we get 
into the uh, into the year. Like I'll go through and be like, man, you know what happened in the uh, in the Sonoma race last fall? <laughs> like what what really happened in this race? But for the most part, average finish is going to be a pretty good indicator of just where these guys were. Now, yet again, not including wrecks, not including bad finishes, but like typically road courses are pretty easy to uh, to pull data from. It, it, it's pretty easy to, to understand how people are running. It's going to be very hard for you to have a good average finish in six races if you were just dog shit. That's just how it is. Um, lead lap finishes, good indicator, especially when races don't get stupid, especially because they took away the uh, um, the stage racing last year. You know, lead lap finish is going to be a good indicator. You know, top five, top ten, you know, just same thing. Like, look, man, all the guys who are bad at these races, like these aren't flukes, like bubble, like, Brad Keselowski ran poorly in these races, okay? Like, when we look at average finish, when we look at where he is, starting near the back, not really gaining a ton of positions, being like a, a low or a high 7K, a, a low 8K driver, like, you know, he's performing bad. And so, like, road courses are something that I just don't really, uh, you know, overreact to or uh, not even overreact to. But, like, I, I'm not going to overcomp- I'm not gonna overcomplicate it, okay? If you are getting in the weeds, you can argue the more high speed road courses are probably more viable or not viable, but are probably a better indicator of how people are going to do at a high speed road course. Like for example, Watkins Glen and Coda probably have more in common. Now I'm not going to like die on a hill with this, but I would understand that. Like if I'm, if I'm looking specifically at Coda and I want to look at more data sets, I would probably look at more past Watkins Glen races than the slow and uh, monotonous. What is Technical, I just went blank. You know what I mean. Like, the, the very technical, like, Sonoma is not a great indicator of Watkins Glen. You know, the very slow one-groove Chicago is not a great indicator of Coda. Like, come on. You know what I mean? Um, but that that's really mainly it. When we're looking at road courses, or not road courses, when we're looking at short tracks, we're looking specifically at Phoenix, at Martinsville. I would look, I would throw in Gateway. Throw in Iowa, throw in Loudoun, throw in Richmond. And we're going to talk about this in a second. We're not going to throw in Bristol here. Uh, where are we at? Martinsville. So when I think of road courses, I think specifically at what is going on with the setup, what is going on with the tires, what is going on with the car? What is the car doing? What are we forcing on the car? So when we're at a high-speed intermediate track, regardless of what the banking is, we're flying in there. We're putting a lot of load on the right front. We're putting a lot of load on the right side when the weight shifts, when you enter the corner. Um, you have to set it up for the weight transfer to, to happen and for the car not to bottom out. When we're looking specifically at road courses, we are focusing, like, let me back it up. When we're at intermediates, we're trying to carry speed through the corner without, like, bottom out, without really having to get off the gas and stuff. At road courses, because we have to get on the brakes, we have to get through flatter tracks, we're looking more so on how these cars are rotating in the center. Yes, carrying speed is just as important, but we're, we're focusing more on getting the car to rotate for the driver, getting the car to be comfortable for the driver, getting the driver to be able to have a way more straighter exit on these corners and stuff. So like, for example, when we're looking at Phoenix, like, yes, I understand Phoenix. You're not going to take every data point used from Phoenix to Martinsville, but they have much more in common with the brake package they're using with the uh, with the wear and tear, certainly on the entry of the corners to, to, to Martinsville and any other place. Same thing with Gateway. When we look at Iowa this year, you know, Iowa is going to race very similar to an intermediate, <laughs> intermediate, intermediate. Like we use the intermediates for like 1.5s, but it's literally a hybrid between, you know, a short track like Richmond and like an intermediate track like Kansas and stuff. So like Loudon, actually let me let me take a breather because I'm like I'm talking very fast. Let me let me figure out how I want to explain this first. All right, sorry about that. I started talking way too fast, and I was like, let me let me color correct this a lot better because everything just being the same color doesn't help. I know they're all blues and they're all slightly different colors, but like like Phoenix, like clearly we're gonna pull data from Phoenix, Martinsville, Richmond, Martinsville and Richmond. We're gonna use those as well. When we look specifically at like Gateway, Iowa, Loudon. In my opinion, I'm not saying these are the only three races you want to pull data from, when, like when we get to Loudon and stuff, but I would categorize these two as being similar. Now, now, this doesn't mean, you know, let's use the same setup there. Like, 
I, I always thought it was stupid when everybody was like, well, you know, Auto Club and, and, and Michigan use the same setups. Like, duh, duh, we can't use those. Well, like, no, they don't use anywhere near the same setup, but the data is very similar. Like, so, like, yeah, we're not using the same setup. We're not even using the same car for Gateway, Iowa, and Loudoun, but we would group these together. These are very similar tracks. I would trust the data between these. They're all These are all categorized as blue tracks. They're all short tracks. They all share similar data points, Adam, or with each other. But, like, yes, they all are different, at least for me. So, like, you know, I know I'm probably, like, going all over the place here. But, uh, like, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Anyway, like, I'm not a fan of short tracks. I'm trying to get all the crap I don't want to talk about first so I can talk about, like, the intermediates for at least, like, 20 minutes. Um, So, like, this is how I would categorize them. Like all the road courses together, I would understand or I would look at, yeah, yeah, like all the short tracks are together. They're all categorized together. These are the groupings of those tracks that I would look at specifically if I wanted to like be more deep in the weeds, but we can use all the data sets there. Okay, now, now let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about the tracks that actually take up a good portion of the season, the intermediates, the 1.5s. Now, some people might argue, man, you can't use Darlington for Dover. You can't use these tracks for this track. This is, yet again, my data set that I would that I used last year that I use when I'm building lineups. So let's just see how similar all these tracks are before we start really arguing semantics and where these guys are. So let's look at William Byron, okay? Let's see how well this guy performed at Las Vegas. He went. He's, he's the best car to start to open the year. He's the best car at Dover, but we can't use Dover at, did I not pull Texas? Texas was late in the year. I was about to say, yeah, we, I forgot, we switched Texas points, sorry. Like, a lot of people are like, man, we, you know, you can't use Dover in an intermediate, uh, with intermediate data. There's nothing similar. And I'm like, Dover races exactly like Charlotte. You would set the car up similar. Everything you're looking for. High load entering the corner. Heavy braking entering the corner. You know, like, you have to heavy brake entering three and one at Charlotte. You're running basically the same uh, speed on the uh, through the center of the corner. You know, the exit of the corner, it's going to get tight at Charlotte. You're going to, it's going to push you up towards the wall in four. It's going to push you up towards the wall in two. A lot of similarities between Dover and Charlotte crossover. You see a lot of data points lean over from Las Vegas to Dover. You see, like, just because Dover is one mile with high banking degrees of corners doesn't mean you can't use it for other places. So, yet again, let, let, let's see how Byron does, uh, if I can spell his name correctly. So, we have William Byron, okay? Look at how similar his data sets are at all these. You know, you know, Kansas, hey, that's a bad race. Or, like, something happened. Like, I don't remember right off the top of my head what happened here at the two Kansas races. But, like, yeah, you know, everywhere else, everything was pretty identical. And you can view this in two different ways. For me, I go through this out the year of, like, okay, this is how I was last year and through this. Is there any significant changes? Uh, not really. So people did catch up later in the season. We see that he kind of drops out from a top three car to, like, fourth and, you know, still a top ten car. <clears throat> but what I would do, like, entering this year, entering 2024, I would wait these races and I did, I'll include Homestead, but I would I would wait these more than these because this was a year ago. This was basically you know ten months ago. A lot of things changed. Look how many races there are. Look at how many things you can have happen. You can change. And so like when we're entering 2024, and we're at like Vegas, we're at like Texas, Dover, Kansas. I'm gonna be using this data set with these races. And then once we start moving more down, I can start removing these races and replace them with these races so we continue to go down and stuff you know same thing with like we'll just use larson for an example we all know larson hit the pit wall at darlington but hey look man pretty similar times pretty similar here he gets crashed at dover by ross chastain but guess what he had the best car at dover starts in the back of the field drives through gets wrecked uh, but look man very very similar data points we look at bowman who was pretty piss poor last year has a great race at Las Vegas, and then evens out after he gets injured in the sprint car wreck, and this is how he is at all these other tracks. When we look at Hamlin, look at that. This is, I mean, I forgot what the word is, but, like, look at the similar data points. This is 
this is all hindsight 2020, seeing how everybody ran just last year. And this is not including previous years. We've already, I've already done all that stuff. This is just literally looking at last year and how all these tracks compare to each other and how they, uh, how they basically perform identical despite the fact that they are drastically different types of tracks or different types of setups. What Some have progressive banking, some don't have progressive banking, some have older pavement, some have newer pavement. Yet again, n another little tangent right here. When you hear somebody talking about, well, this track has a highway racetrack. This track has old asphalt. This is a highway racetrack. Everything. Every track is highway now, okay? There is no such thing as a new racetrack at this point, okay? All these tracks, yes, Darlington wears more than Dover. Yes, Darlington wears more than Nashville, okay? But Pocono, like, why is Pocono in here? Why do I include Pocono in here? Brandon, Pocono has three corners, and it's like two and a half miles, and it's a flat track. Why are you including Pocono? Because the data points around these intermediate tracks work at Pocono, okay? That's just how it is. Now, I don't include Michigan in here. Michigan, Michigan isn't... Uh, Michigan, you will see very similar thing, just like with Pocono, but I just typically remove Michigan from the equation here. Uh, I will use like this data entering Michigan, but I won't include it in here because because Michigan is is different. Um, same thing with Pocono. Like if you really want to remove Pocono, you can. I'm just showing you that hey man, a lot of similar things that happen at Pocono, a track that has nothing in common with the design of Dover. Yeah, you know, hey man, those the, the data set is right there, and, and, and it's uh, it's showing pretty similar things. Same thing with Chastain. We're seeing a lot. I mean, yet again, early in the year, these tracks have a lot in common. As we get through the year, I mean, all these tracks, you can understand that they're being similar. But this is over the course of the season. This is right at the start of the season. This is the May section. This is entering June, and then this is late in the season, entering the playoffs and stuff. So yeah, we're gonna have guys like kind of drop off, and as people gain you know, not even knowledge, but they gain speed throughout the season. They're in the playoffs. They got different things. We typically see more volatility in the second half of the season. That's why I'm just saying between Texas and Charlotte from race 10 to 15, May and late April is the most fun part of DFS for me every single year because these tracks are very similar they're, it's nearly identical on how people will perform. Hey, if somebody does well at Dover, if somebody does well at Texas, they're most likely going to do well for the rest of the month. You know, uh, we look at Truex, like we can look at every single person here. I mean, Truex had just a disastrous playoff last year, but all these were mainly, you know, he got wrecked at Kansas. He, he wrecked at Kansas, you know, he had terrible, terrible races, but the races they didn't run into issues with, he was right up there. And this is yet again, why I don't use you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, because like, I, I don't really like, I don't need any, any extra information. When I'm looking at all these races as a whole, I, I can just view where they're at. As I said, this is the top 10. Hey man, it's very easy to see where these guys are at. You know, we look at Bell, we look at um, Bubba Wallace. And this is another reason why, you know, early in the year, I'm usually very aggressive on whoever is fast right out of the gates. So like if you perform well at Vegas, you perform well at Texas. I'm going to be overweight on you for the month of May. That's how it always is. And this is why I would do that. Like, look at Keselowski. This is pretty, excuse me, very, very, very consistent. The guys who are bad. Okay, so, like, these are all the good guys. I'm just going down the list at Vegas here and seeing how these guys perform. But let's look at the back half of the field. Let's see how bad these guys were. Let's see how, like, consistently bad these guys were. So, like, Haley basically runs the exact same in all these races. We have, uh, I'm trying to think of other people who were like in the bag. Like we have Priest. Now Priest ended up cracking off, was it six top 15s or eight top 15s in the last, I think it was, I think it was six top 15s in the last eight races last year. But I got to check because this is, um, that is Las Vegas. And finishing position is different than what I have here because this is mainly, uh, just who the best car was in the day. This is after I analyze everything. But like LaJoy, you know? And also, this is what I use to make projections as well. Like, it, I'm not saying it's like the easiest thing in the world, but like, look, man, when we enter a race and we see LaJoy, you know, qualify like 23rd, I'm like, all right, okay, cool, man. He might have speed, but like, realistically, his car is going to be like between 21st and 28th all day. That That's how I build the projection and stuff. You know, when we look at, like, Chris Buescher and stuff, this is a great example of, oh, man, I need to, let me do this. 
Bushers. I don't remember how to spell Busher. Like when we look at Busher, okay? Yet again, and, and the same thing, it's like a, uh, what are those graphs? Like the uh, like the stock market graph, or whatever you have it. Like checking out the stocks. Like you see where these guys are going, you know? Chris Busher, you know, slowly increased throughout the year. And we see him like gaining speed. Like it's not a fucking fluke that he had speed at the end of the year. It, like him winning the races, him him being there, him being up front. You know, like he won he won Richmond late in the year. He won, uh, I believe it's just just Richmond. I could be wrong. But like this isn't just flukes. Like these guys don't come out of nowhere. Like if you see a guy trending up, like man, this guy's actually carrying some speed throughout the year. We need to pay attention to it. You know, we look at like Ty Gibbs. You know, all over the place. But uh. I don't know. At least for me, this is how I categorize things. This is how I look for uh, how car, how guys are doing, how guys are performing, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just categorize all these bad boys together. We're just going to call it the green section. We're going to leave India out of it at the moment. So we are naming these guys the Green Kings. We're just going to make it neon green. <clears throat> Now, if you're looking for specific stuff, then you could start taking, you know, laps out or tracks out. Like, if you really just want to look at concrete tracks, you can look at Dover, you can look at Nashville together. You know, if you're looking at high-wear racetracks, you can look at Kansas, you can look at Las Vegas, and you can look at Darlington specifically. Like, that's the fun part. Like, you can pull all that, you can look at all the data, and then if you really want to go down certain roads and stuff, well, then, yeah, there's nothing holding you back there. But uh, I typically use it all together. This is usually the screen that I'm looking at. And then if I'm like just wanting to be specific on something, well, then I'll, I'll be more specific and I won't count certain tracks and stuff. Um, when we're looking at Indianapolis and Michigan this year, yet again, the in, another aspect of this is like when you look at racing, I like racing that has high speed, that has, you know, aerodynamics in play like a lot of uh, I, I just like high speed racing okay it's why I like air racing you know guys taking old old World War II planes and then the Merlin motors and uh, the Merlin engines Merlin I just want to blank on what they're called but like the Reno air races loved them man because that is just pure speed those guys are doing like 400 miles an hour big old rip to the Reno air races hopefully hopefully they moved to like Plano or somewhere closer to me so I can see it um, but like we're looking for high speed in that, you know, when we're looking at, um, drag racing, we're looking for high speed, you know, I'm just kind of rambling here. And, but and anyway, I was, I was going to get back to the point of like, when we look at Indianapolis, when we look at Michigan, we can look at tracks that are very specific to, uh, maintain a higher speed in the corners, maintaining higher speed through flat corners, whatever the case may be. So like when we're looking at Indianapolis, when we're looking at Michigan this year, we're we're gonna want to look at Pocono. Not not because Pocono has one of the corners designed after Indy. That's not why I'm looking at Pocono. I'm looking at Pocono because I want to see the amount of speed that somebody can carry through a flat corner and the amount of speed that they can carry down a straightaway and gain on a straightaway. You know, like that's the important nature. All that is based in setup. All that's based on how you leave your corner and head down the straightaway. You know, it's so like Pocono is going to be a great indicator of Indianapolis. I would argue that any that Michigan that Michigan you can use data that you get from Indianapolis. That's how I would look at it. I would look at, you know, how people performed at Kansas entering Indianapolis. Like these are like data set. Like they're all interchangeable. You can all you can always find stuff that you can use at these tracks. I know it you might look at Indianapolis and be like, well there's not there's no data points we can use. We better use uh, you know, old races. And I think that's just so dumb. I, I think I think it's so dumb. You don't have to use track history. You don't have to use old races for that. You can use current form. You can use the current tracks we go to. There's a lot of similarities between these. You know? Like this during this whole time I haven't mentioned using uh, like track history once. Like, there'll be times, like, well, we'll go back here, and we'll, like, choose, I don't know, we'll choose the track that has, like, I'm trying to choose one that they race at once a year. Let's use uh, Dover for an example here. So, like, Dover, we, you know, if, if somebody's like, well, we're entering, we're entering Dover this weekend, we're entering Dover this weekend, I know we just went to Las Vegas, but we're not going to include this at all, we're going to go to Dover, and we're just going to look at uh, track history at Dover. Let's see how well... 
Byron, well, actually, who did well? Byron Larson, oh, my bad. Byron, Chastain, Blaney, and Hamlin. Let's see how they would have done here. You know, yeah, sure, we have Hamlin third. We have Byron ninth. We have Chastain, probably not even anywhere near here because this is being flooded with just old data from old cars that we don't use. Like, I'm not using any Gen 6 data point. I don't really want to use year one of, of next gen because nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. That was such a new card. It was just all up in the air. Nobody was gaining anything from that. So like, like we'll, we'll click on like Hamlin for example, you know, these two races, next gen, these two races, gen six don't even matter anymore. Like this is, this is just unusable, just white noise. This is just too much noise. I don't want to see that stuff. You know, Harvick's being carried by how he used to perform you know, because he did so well here, but recently in the next gen, like, you can see a significant drop-off. Like, I, I mean, we're, like, this is kind of a duh situation, but like, William Byron, for example, he went off last year, won, like, every race, you know, but if you're using, like, old data sets, you know, then you're going to dilute what you should be seeing, even, even the first year of the next gen. I think you should delete, you should not be including the first year of the next gen. I think the only data points you should be using if you're using old races this year are from 2023 and that's it i don't want to be distracted by anything else i don't want to be looking at any other data set other than this stuff here like i just don't see that i just don't see a reason why we would be doing that i, I just think it, it's just too much noise i think there's just too much there's sometimes you could have too much data and it'll push you away like find the data points that you want and use it this is the data points that i use this is why i use it so i'm not going to be using anything else uh very quickly so, like, I haven't highlighted Indianapolis. I haven't highlighted Michigan. I will be using, you know, the greens to look at, at these tracks. So we'll just include them in the green. But they are, we'll take them on a case-by-case -case basis. And especially when we get there, like, later this year, we'll, we'll break them down more. When we look at Bristol, I would be very hesitant on using Dover data. I hear that used a lot. I'm not a big fan of that. I do believe Bristol is its own animal. Very similar to Atlanta, like that's just how it is. Like we are going to use this for an example here. So like when we look at Bristol, and we're seeing that qual. Ah, that's the wrong one. We're seeing that um. Same thing with the road courses, man. Like road courses are all based on what they're doing recently and where they qualify. You have to qualify up front. That's just how it is. The only one where it really didn't work was was Chicago because NASCAR like fucked the field. But if they're if you're qualifying up front, you're most likely going to do well. Same thing in Bristol. If you're qualifying up front and you have a fast car in practice, you're most likely going to run pretty good in the race, man. That's really how it is. Bristol has been wildly unpredictable ever since they went to the one race a year thing because they had the dirt race in the spring. So you'd only come here once a year. There wasn't really a lot of... Um, similarities here and i'm i'm even afraid that this might include the dirt race as well thank god it doesn't okay so that's good so we are just using asphalt bristol but man bristol is such an it, it's its own animal especially now because they're only going once a year um bristol will take on its own at least for this year at least for me like when i get to bristol you know what, I'm just going to look at where people are in practice and qualifying. I'm not going to look at anything else. When we get to Bristol 2, I'm going to see the results, the race that these guys are having at Bristol. I'm going to see the results that they d end up having at Dover because, yet again, not similar setups, but the amount of G-force, the, the amount of lateral force being forced on the car in the corners, like, that is something. And then I can go ahead and... I forgot if there's another track that I would look at for that. I don't think I would. So I think entering the next Bristol race, it'd be kind of where these guys were in practice, if that was replicatable in the race, how they performed in the race, and then how they perform in practice and qualifying for Bristol number two. And that's uh, that would really kind of just be it for me um, in terms of Bristol. Everything else is kind of already set up. Um, I know this was kind of all over the place and stuff, uh, yet again, it, cause in my head, I'm like, I just talked about this last year. I just said all this stuff last year, but, uh, I just want to try and, and get the stuff out to people who maybe haven't seen that or haven't heard that, or I have no idea what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> like they don't know what these tracks, like, uh, like when we look at the schedules, man, like just look at the amount of laps they do. Also in, in my head, I think I did this for Atlanta. 
I kept saying miles. I said four hundred. I kept saying four hundred laps at Atlanta. I meant to say like two sixty seven. But all all these tracks are so drastically different, man. They're so drastically built differently, and yet, if you're good at the intermediate tracks, you're most likely going to be good at all the intermediate tracks. Like if you have speed at these tracks, you're most likely to have speed later in the year when you go back to them. I use it very much. Recent data, what they're doing this year, entering this entering 2024. I'll be specifically looking at how these were at with asterisks by them because yet again they're they're in the playoffs. But I will be looking at probably these five. I'll throw a, I'll throw a Homestead on there, so that'll be six races. That'll be a good data set. I'll still have this on there to look at, but um, these would be the ones I'd probably lean more towards um, trusting and stuff as we enter Las Vegas, as we enter Texas, and then just kind of doing the same thing. Like, once we get races done this year, I can start adding them just like I did here, and then we can see how it goes and stuff. So, yeah, hopefully this helps uh, you have an idea of how I approach things or what how I think you should approach it. Um, and just get rid of the noise. Like, we don't need to hear, like, oh, this is a highway racetrack. So-and-so is good at highway racetracks. Oh, this is a cold day. So and so does well in night races and day to in day to night races. Like I just no, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, sure, we could look at those once we understand this. Once we understand the the base data set that we're working with, yeah, then we can start exploring other things. But past that, man, I just I just use this. I don't know. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives an idea of some things that I do. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys later.